Hello, welcome to part three of our series of videos on programming in Turbo Pascal 7.1 uh, on Windows 10. In this part, we are going to extend the functionality of the program. We're going to add some sound, uh, some basic beeps to represent the dots and the dashes. We're going to uh, use procedures to, to handle this functionality. Uh, we're going to uh, wrap our entire program in a while loop so we can keep repeating the program until the user wants to exit. Uh, and we're going to extend the Morse array so we can handle full stops, spaces, numbers, and any other character uh, that they may want to or may input from the keyboard. Uh, so without further ado, let's uh, get on and start programming. Um, you will notice that I've made a made a few changes to the code since the uh, last uh, episode. Uh, first of all, I've extended the Morse code array. Um, this took a little bit of time to get right, so I did this off camera. Uh, I'm going to include uh, this version of the code in the notes uh, to save you some time typing it in, uh, because uh, it is very fiddly and it's very easy to make mistakes. Uh, and it does need to be absolutely right to avoid any errors. Uh, so hopefully uh, you'll be able to import that into your program to save you some time. If not, then by all means copy it out. Um, right, so you'll notice that it's now uh, 1 to 95, um, and it starts at the decimal value of 32 um, on the ASCII chart, going all the way to uh, 127. Um, so the first one is a space, so I've, in curly brackets here, that's just a note. And you'll notice there's a space between the two quotes. quotes. If they are characters that um, cannot be converted to Morse code, then they're just double, they're just single quotes together with no space in between. So effectively they get ignored. Um, uh, I've now included uh, numbers as well, and both upper and lowercase letters. Um, I've left the code in that converts uh, the letters to uh, to uppercase, uh, but we don't actually need that. That could be deleted. You can leave that in or take it out. It actually doesn't make any difference. OK. So one other change I've made here. We've changed this to minus 31 instead of minus 63, because the starting position uh, on the ASCII chart is 32, which we want to make 1, so we take away 31. Um, and I've also indented the code a little bit, just to make it a little more readable, uh, but this doesn't make any difference whatsoever to how the code works. It just makes it easier, uh, easier for, especially for you to, to understand uh, the code. So uh, we will now move on. So let's do the sound first. Um, we will do two procedures uh, for this, one for dots and one for dashes, and this is how we do it. Um, if we start after our Morse sim array, we type in procedure, and then the name of the procedure. So let's do the dashes, so dash sound. And then the semicolon, you'll notice there's no uh, parenthesis, um, which you have with many other languages. Uh, if you um, want to uh, put some variables into the procedure, then you do use parenthesis, but if not, you don't have anything there. So, as with loops, you have a begin and an end with a semicolon. Um, and we just use the word sound. Um, this effectively just turns the sound on. Um, not it, you, you can't control the amount of time that the sound is played for with this command, so it's just the, the tone of it. And with a bit of experimentation, I've decided 220 is about the best. Um, so that switches the sound on. Then we use another command, which is called delay. Um, 
and with a little experimentation I've decided for dashes uh, 300 is about the best that's 300 milliseconds so 0.3 of a second um, so we've turned the sound on we've delayed for 0.3 of a second and then we switch the sound off and that is simply done like this no sound semicolon so now uh, well let, let's let's carry on let's do uh, the second procedure as well so procedure dot sound semicolon begin and end sound same tone of 220 but this time for a dot we want it to be uh, oops much shorter do it for 100 milliseconds and then not forgetting to turn the sound off okay so that's both of our procedures what we need to do now is get the first more string and then find out how many dots and dashes there are in the string so for the letter B there's four and uh, for the letter A there's two uh, we create a loop that loops that many times you know four for B and two for A uh, and in that loop we go through each of the dots and dashes in that particular string and play the appropriate sound um, the the, sh the short sound the dot sound for the dots and the dash sound for the dashes right so what what we're going to need to do is we're going to have to use uh, something called a, a nested loop um, this would have been one of the requirements of the original product as well uh, project as well that we use nested loops um, we're going to create another variable uh, another string variable called uh, what shall we call it temp morse and in temp morse so this is the loop that prints out that displays the morse code uh, text uh, sorry the Morse code symbols so in that loop we want to assign um, temp Morse the variable that we just created um, we want that to equal Morse sim array and we're also going to need to know the length of that string so we'll go up and create another variable in a second so L we want to equal the length of temp morse so if we go back up to the top and create a variable in the group of integers called L And before we get to end, because this is going to be a loop within a loop, we want to say, okay, we're going to have to create another variable in a second. I should have thought about that before. So it'll be 4m equals 1 to L. So that's the length of temp morse. Do. Begin and end um, 
and so we're going to be going through each character in that particular string array and check to see whether it's a dot or a dash or or neither but it, it will always be a dot or a dash so we only need to check for one of them actually because we can use else instead so let's do if temp morse m equals let's check for dots then and then we need to do a begin um, and an end we don't put semicolon in for this when you're doing a begin and an end for ifs and thens and elses you don't put a semicolon in um, so we want to do right so if it's a dot we want to do we want to run the procedure that we wrote at the beginning of the lesson uh, which we called dot sound um, and we're going to put a delay in here because just 100 milliseconds because um, before we go on to the next dot or the dash we want to gap between them otherwise they're just gonna it's just gonna sound like one long tone so uh, there we go and and then we want to do else if temp morse uh, what letter would you use? M equals uh, dash. So there'll only be dots or dashes. That's that's the idea anyway. Then I don't think it matters if there's a space there. Um, and then we do another begin and an end and. Basically, we just copy what we did before, except this time we do dash sound, semicolon, delay 100. Now we can play around with these um, 100 milliseconds. It could be that we prefer to have a, a longer space between them, but that will probably do. Now. I talked about indentation at the beginning of this. Let's um, let's indent this a little bit because it's going to start getting very confusing. Otherwise, so where's that begin? Begin end. Begin end. Begin. So. Uh, actually, we're going to need to indent this more. With uh, modern opera, uh, with modern languages, uh, we don't have to mess around like this with indentation. It's just done automatically, and it does make life a lot, lot easier. But that's much clearer for us, so that's fine. So what we haven't done is added the variable m. So let's go up and do that. Oops, not a dot. Now does that compile? Yep, that's absolutely fine. Let's give that a go, see what happens. Uh, let's stick to banana. <laughs> And there we go. It works. So now we're going to move on to the while loop. Um, if 
we go to we want to go to uh, begin we want to start the while loop at the point um, we don't need to clear the screen every time I don't think so I think if we if we start it here so we'll type in uh, while then we need to create another variable this time it'll be a, a boolean or a boolean variable which will either be true or false so we'll call it main main loop do um, so we need a begin and an end for for the for the while loop so we have begin there now we're gonna I'm going to use some curly braces here just so that we can make it absolutely clear what this beginning and end is for so you can see so we'll say while loop okay and so we need the end of that um, uh, we're going to need the while loop um, at just before well before the uh, the end of the while loop uh, before the end of the main program so uh, that would be here and in curly braces we will say while loop okay now we don't want to be running this at the moment because what will happen uh, is it will just go on forever and there'll be no way of getting out of it so we need a way of getting out of the while loop and um, we're also not going to need this anymore so let's get rid of that I got called away for a minute there so where was I uh, so we finished the while loop did we put uh, so we've got main loop so we need to create a a boolean or bool um, so main loop no main loop Um, I've forgotten what we do in Pascal. Do we call it a boot? Yeah, we type the whole thing out. Yeah, that's fine. Boolean. Okay, that's perfect. So that should compile all right. Last thing we want to do though is run this. That's fine. Right, so let's go back down to the bottom. Oh, actually, we don't want to go to the bottom. Let's come up a little bit. What we need to do now is create a way to get out of the loop. So where have I started it? So above here, just before we go into the while loop, we need to say that main loop equals true um, just in case you don't know actually I don't want to put that there do I yes I do yeah while main loop do so what this is saying while main loop do uh, is saying it's actually saying while main loop equals true do the loop uh, so uh, by default a uh, when, when you set it up as a variable a bool variable it's false so we need to we need to create it as true and that will allow the loop to start um, so now if we go down towards the bottom at some point we want to ask the question do you want to do it again or do you want to exit or words to that effect and let's we're going to say main loop at this point equals false 
So now at this point it will run through once and it won't run again. And then we want to ask the question uh, would you like to enter another another sentence y or n Uh, then we need to read the input from the user. So uh, we're going to need to create another variable. We'll call it go again. And then we want to compare the input from the user. Um, all we're really interested is interested in is um whether the user is type we could we could do it one way or the other we could go if the user said n um then we don't change anything we leave it as main loop equals false and then the program ends or we can say or we can look for the letter y uh in which case it changes it to uh, it changes main loop to true uh that would be the easier way to do it because then you haven't got to do an else um so so uh, and the other thing we want to do i think is change the result uh to uppercase uh, that way we've only got a, a test for a capital y and that's it so go again equals capital y then main loop equals true and well, that should do it I think let's just compile that oh no it won't work because Have we created the main loop variable? Yeah, we have. Main loop boolean. Main loop equals true. Oh, an unknown identifier. Go again, which needs to be a. That can be a char. We can use a different one, which just looks for a character. Uh, so if we go here. Go again, char. Actually, let's not complicate things. We'll say string because if someone enters anything more than one single letter, it's going to uh, create an error, I think. So let's compile that. And it's saying character expression upcase go again. Okay, I've just realised the mistake I've made uh, by trying uh, using upcase and then the variable in brackets like this. Uh, it can only do uppercase for a single character, so it does actually have to be a char. Uh, we'd have to go through each character individually otherwise. So what we'll do um, is we will change the variable to a char, which is what I was going to do in the first place. I wish I would have uh, stuck to my guns now. So let's change that to a char go back down to the bottom that should now compile which it does right so let's uh, save this Ooh. and run it let's see what happens so right that all seems to be working okay the one thing that i've noticed is that we're not getting a new line so we'll stick that in let's try clicking y and
And let's try no. And that exits the program. OK, that's all working absolutely great. The one thing that we do need to do, though, is before... Uh, I'm trying to remember where... I can't rem I'm going to have to go in this again just to see where we need that new line. Uh, would you like another sentence we want on a new line? OK. Would you like another? So if we put, let's do this a really simple way. We just do a right line here. Oops, rich line, right line. Um, so let's say, let's try oranges are great, full stop, and then we we'll do some numbers and then end off with a few strange symbols just to see whether we get any errors. Well, that's working perfectly. Um, so we've got uh, we've got a full stop being replaced or, or a period being replaced with the word stop, which I think is probably how it should be done. I'm not entirely sure. I'm certainly no expert at um, Morse code, but uh, you certainly can't use another period or full stop because that will just look like uh, part of the Morse code. So anyway, do we want to do another sentence? Let's say yes. Um, would we want to clear the screen every time? I'm not sure. I think this is fine. Um, so do we need to test anything else? So the only two things that it picks out are the two periods, two full stops. OK, well, I think that concludes the program, to be honest. Um, if there are some additions that you think I should add to this, then please let me know. But um, we've used functions, procedures, arrays, we've used nested loops. Um, I think we've used everything that we would need to do to get a, a reasonable mark in in an assignment, if this was an assignment. Um, the, uh, there are some additional things we could add to this, I suppose. We could, um, um, we could write to a file. To, uh, to save what we do so that you could then print it off um, uh, that's um, I suppose another way that we could add some functionality and it's uh, another thing that um, uh, might be useful to know how to do write into files and reading from files um, yeah we could even find a way to uh, read from a file to um, uh, uh, convert uh, some text that's in a file to Morse code uh, so if you think that's a good idea, let me know and uh, we'll do a fourth part where we add some more functionality right into files. And if there's anything else that you think that should be added to this program, uh, by all means, please let me know. Uh, in the meantime, I hope um, this has been helpful. Um, these are my very first videos on YouTube. Um, I thought I'd do something a little bit different. Um, this certainly isn't uh, my day-to-day -day work working with Pascal that's for sure in fact I, I literally have not touched this language for um, at least a couple of decades I would think maybe 25 years something like that um, but because I do work with other languages more modern languages mostly these days Java and C sharp um, it's come back to me very very quickly um, and I think you know it's just like riding a bike really uh, with any language uh, it takes a little bit of time just to remember the syntax but um, as, as you know it comes back to you very quickly and off you go um, other tutorials coming up well I think maybe um, I think I'd like to do some on C sharp uh, teaching some of the concepts certainly the uh, the object orientation concepts um, I would like to cover um, uh, what I use on a daily basis 
at the moment. Um, is Unity uh, and I write C sharp scripts for Unity. Um, so at some point, perhaps we'll we'll get onto um, onto C sharp uh, onto Unity. Um, but until then, uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.